Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name's Rich and this is Savage Supercars. So today's video is all about icons and what kind of cars create that iconic image for you. This is going to be completely subjective. I'm going to talk about a few cars. Hopefully there'll be lots of interaction with you guys talking about different cars that have been iconic for you with your childhood, with your car journey. Before we get to that, I would just like to say absolutely devastated with the fact that the Geneva Motor Show has been cancelled this year. As you know, Savage Supercars were going. We were invited uh, by a good friend of ours, Naylor Harrington. Um, we were going to go as part of his company, Protect and Tour, and we were going to meet one of his clients, a global superstar, while out there. Lots of new cars that we wanted to video and get on the channel. And unfortunately, due to the, the problem with the coronavirus potential, the, the show has been cancelled. We will do a separate video showing you the highlights of some of the cars. Obviously, the media event yesterday, there's been a lot of cars coming out. Uh, some stunning cars, stunning facts and figures from Koenigsegg, the new Aston Martin V12 Roadster, etc. Um, but we'll do that on another video. But unfortunately, guys, we won't be going to Geneva next week um, due to what's happened. They've cancelled it to the public. So a uh, bit of a shame. Let's hope we get out there in 2021. So today's video, Savage Icons. We're talking about iconic cars that have really, really made an effect on you or, or me or whoever on the, on their motoring journey. Uh, and cars that have massively increased in value or in popularity. Uh, and we're going to talk about a few of those. So the first car I want to talk about has to be the Ferrari F40. Um, it's been an iconic in its day. It's still massively popular now. Um, values are going up and up and up. Um, it's just a crazy car. So the car was produced between 87 and 1992. Um, we're talking about a 2.9 V8 twin turbo, producing about 478 brake horsepower, which for its day was massive. Um, 0 to 16, about four and a half seconds, but with a top speed of 201 mile an hour. Uh, this was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, the styling, it was completely designed for aerodynamics and racing. It was just a beautiful car. You know, Perspex glass in the back, first car to do that, road production car. Um, now, Ferrari were only going to build 300, but demand was so popular that by the end of production in 1992, they actually produced 1,315 cars. Um, it's just a crazy, iconic car. There's lots of car collectors all over the world that have got an F40 in their garage. Other cars moving forward, like the F50, never had the the appeal that the F40 had, even now. Uh, although the F50 is lovely, the F40 was a really special car. Uh, now, when it was new in 87, 88, it was around about the 300 grand mark, uh, dollars, that is. Um, now they're north of 900,000. Uh, some are going to auction. r and and South have sold one quite recently at $1.2 million. So there's a massive influx in price um, and a real iconic car. And I think anybody, even if you're not over into cars you see an image of an f40 and you know exactly what it is staying with ferrari um one car for me growing up was just a huge uh, piece of americana history through, through movies was the ferrari 250 california um what an absolute stunning car obviously made famous by the ferris bueller movie um, and that kind of opened up the eyes to people and realized what this car was this car was built in 1957 to 1960 and the original cost was twelve thousand dollars believe it or not that's how much it was back in the day um nowadays you're talking some of these cars have been north of 20 million dollars i mean that's absolutely obscene there's quite a famous story of um Chris Evans, the radio DJ, bought um, James Corbin's 250 GT California uh, for about six and a half, seven million pounds, um, and then had to spend a fortune on it because there's so much was wrong with it. But an old vintage car, you're going to have to spend money on it. But what a stunning car. I mean, pure looks, absolute pure looks. It was a 2.9 V12, created about 240 brake horsepower, um, sounded amazing, looks, looks, even now looks absolutely amazing. And it produced 108. Um, and records show it, there's about 33 left in the world. And actually, last year, there was a barn find that hadn't been touched for 30 years. Uh, and it had been stripped down, ready to be restored, and then the garage got locked, and, and they found it 30 years later, which must be an amazing find, because even in that condition, it would be reaching probably north of $10 million. So the 250 GT California, what a car. Next, the car that uh, meant everything to me, I was a huge Miami Vice fan, and this kind of took it to the new level. It's the Ferrari Testarossa, um, the original one in 84 to 91, 
uh, production car. They did tweak it then. You had the 512 TR and the 512 M. Uh, but I'm talking about the original Ferrari Testarossa, the, the, the 84 to 91 car, which Don Johnson drove in uh, Miami Vice after his Daytona blew up in the previous series. Uh, the white one, everyone remembers the, the sort of linen suits and the white Ferrari Testarossa. It was just such an iconic car. The side cuts into the bodywork, the singular massive driver's uh, rear view mirror, oh, sorry, uh, um, wing mirror on the arms, just unbelievable. And this car has massively, massively uh, become popular in the last sort of eight years. Um, it's It's gone it's been averaging an increase in value of about $15,000 per year uh, in over the last eight years. It's, it's a huge, huge car uh, in value, popularity. Now, a 4.9 flat 12, given about 390 brake horsepower. Um, but it was the looks that made it look so special. And the Ferrari Testarossa, even now, you see one at auction, um, has a massive following and a massive interest in there. Uh, definitely a car to watch. I think definitely a car for investment, but a real iconic car for me personally, something that I absolutely love to to watch you know seeing don johnson driving around in miami just made you want to drive a ferrari Tessarossa. so such an amazing car and definitely one for investment now i've just mentioned it but the other car uh, from miami vice was the ferrari daytona um absolutely stunning stunning car and i have mentioned before in one of my previous videos about the new ferrari roma it definitely has styling looks from the early Daytonas. Now this was produced in 1968 to 73 and it was a 4.3 V12 and it was available in the Berlinta and also the Spider, so the coupe and the convertible. Uh, it's about 347 brake horsepower with a top speed of 175 mile an hour. But again, just the looks, really long bonnet, just absolutely stunning looks. Um, there's a few for sale actually in the UK at the moment. Uh, Joe Macari's got a stunning gunmetal grey one. Um, and they're valued at about 600k at the moment, but absolutely stunning, stunning car. Just looks amazing. Um, definitely one to look out for. And again, you know, made famous from Miami Vice in the early series before the Testarossa and just a beautiful, beautiful car. Now, coming away from Italian uh, styling at the moment, we're going back to one of my first passions, I suppose, really, is the Porsche 356 Speedster. Um, just the whole 356 model is just absolutely stunning. This is like, this is pre-sits before the 911 and the 912. Just an absolute beautiful, beautiful car in the hardtop and the convertible. It was built in Austria from 1948 to 1949, and they had a split screen, so you can tell the Austrian cars. But in 1950, it moved over to Germany, uh, where Porsche made it, until 1965. Uh, it was four grand when it was new back in the day, $4,000 approximately back in the day. Um, obviously, iconic air-cooled engine, the style, the looks. It looked like a stretched VW Beetle, but really sporty styling, and really took Porsche into the mainframe idea of, of what a sports car or supercar was going to be. Not fast, 101 brake horsepower kind of thing. I think originally the early ones were like 54 brake horsepower. You could tweak the engine uh, to, to 101 brake horsepower, but it was the sound, that typical air-cooled sound, and the looks, that looks absolutely amazing. Um, they're reaching now, or genuine ones are about $150,000, $160,000. Um, there was about 3,570 produced in that in that time frame. Um, but there's a lot of kit cars out there now, and this is what catches a lot of people. Like I go to a lot of car shows and used to some really good kit cars. Chisel had were, were probably most famous for their uh, Porsche 346 kits, uh, and Pilgrim do a really nice one as well. And also you can, nowadays, modern running gear, changing the engine, so it still has that classic sort of mid-50s look and style, but you can have it a bit more reliable, a bit more more idealistic running gear, um, beautiful, beautiful cars. And some of the kits you can pick up are sort of 20, 25K. So, um, you know, if you haven't got the 150 grand for an original one, there is a kit car available. But the 356, just stunning, um, absolutely beautiful, beautiful car. Now, the Jaguar E-Type, this put Britain on the map, manufacturing-wise, for that super sports car, the ideal icon. And even now, the E-Type has such a massive following. Um, built in 61 to 74, originally it had a 3.8, but this was eventually replaced in 1965 uh, with to a 4.2. 
And it was available in the coupe, the hardtop coupe, or the convertible styling. Um, and it had a 150 mile an hour claim top speed. And this was the first production car from Britain that had that kind of speed. It was just another level. It was probably twice the speed limit of the average family car that was out at the time. So it was a real iconic thing. Famous, famously known. Loads of celebrities had them. Uh, Enzo Ferrari publicly said it was the prettiest car he's ever seen. So a huge accolade to come from somebody like Enzo Ferrari to say that. Um, now these cars really, they're the benchmark of the classic car market. So their price fluctuations is crazy. You know, um, I remember in the early 80s, they, they were quite cheap. And then they had a massive influx in price. And then we had the crash and they came back down in price again. Um, at the moment, they're selling for sort of between 150 and 250K, depending on spec and, and condition and originality, etc. Um, but they're always going to be. A, a real, real iconic British supercar. It's something that everyone loves. I think four years ago, Eagle Industries bought out um, their their version of an E-Type Jag. Um, it's quite famously done on Top Gear by Jeremy Clarkson about the Eagle um, stunning, stunning uh, remake of an E-Type Jaguar. It's half a million pound, but beautiful, beautiful car. Um, I've never driven one. I've, I've been a passenger in one, and I've seen many at the shows. Beautiful car. It has a massive following, so definitely, definitely got. In, it, it's worth the title of an icon, the Jaguar E-Type. Now we're talking about a brand that you guys know I love so much. It's the Aston Martin DB5. If you think of a DB5, you think of James Bond 007. You have to. It's the ultimate car, isn't it? You know, um, only a thousand and fifty and a thousand and fifty nine cars ever built in 64 to 65 um lots of variants from that onwards but that was the original original db5 absolutely stunning car 285 brake horsepower with a top speed of 145 mile an hour um i haven't driven one i know somebody that has driven one and said it was very challenging you know they say never meet your hero i think it's that kind of car you know you, you, we're all used to modern cars now and it had heavy steering heavy brakes notchy gear change but it's an Aston Mine. It's a DB5. You're going to feel like James Bond when you drive that car. It's just absolutely stunning. Obviously, um, Goldfinger made it famous, and then it's been in a lot of subsequent Bond films since then. Um, but it is just an iconic, iconic car. Now, ironically, when it was new, it was about thirteen and a half thousand dollars, uh, and they're now fetching half a million dollars. So he's had a massive following, and I think the limitation as well. There's only a thousand fifty nine cars ever built. Um, Stunning, stunning car. Definitely an icon and definitely uh, a beautiful, beautiful Aston Martin, as always. The Ford Mustang, the real American icon, started being built in 1964 uh, as a first people car. What people don't know is, made, a lot of people don't know, is that this was the first public car, the first car that was sold to the masses where options were available and lots of options, options, choice of fabric body style wheels colors everything cars didn't come that way before before it was like black car white car and that's it standard specification the ford mustang completely opened up what was available to the people now ford didn't expect it to be as successful as it was and it's probably now still probably the most successful production car for its first financial year to give you an idea, I mean, it was being sold the first weekend in America in 1964. It was sold for $2,300, the starting price for a Ford Mustang. And they sold 22,000 cars in its first weekend. Now, remember, we're talking about the early 60s, at least to mid 60s. So the first car was called a, a 1964 and a half K car. And it was 22,000 cars sold in its first weekend. They went on and sold 303,000 in its first year. That's just an unbelievable record for a car. That even now, I'd have a 64 Mustang tomorrow. I, I, just absolutely beautiful. You know, everybody would have a Mustang. They're just so, so stunning cars. And they still make them now. This is the ironic thing. You can still get a brand new right-hand drive, 2.3 EcoBoost or a 5-litre V8 GT available now. Now, when they first came out, they was available in the Coupe the convertible and obviously followed up by the fastback and obviously the fastback was made famous by the Eleanor car, the GT 500, which everyone talks about, which are, are massively popular and have a huge following and value is through the roof. Now, um, 
They're also one of the biggest American cars that can be tweaked and tuned. Um, the things you can do with them now, you can get a 900 brake horsepower Ford Mustang, still under Ford warranty from, from Clive Sutton. The CS models are just amazing. Um, and even though there's lots of generations of Mustang in between, so the original 60s Mustang, and then you had the 70s, the, the Mach 1s, and then you had the 80s, and then the early 90s uh, box body ones, which weren't massively popular, but still class as a Mustang. And then in 2015, we have the, the shape that we have now, although it's had a few facelifts, it's still that iconic shape, and you can see it going back to its original 1960s uh, roots and, and styling. Just absolutely beautiful. I'd love to have a Mustang on the channel. I would love to run uh, a 5-litre V8 GT on the channel for six months. I think it's an absolutely stunning car, beautiful looks, um, and, and it is a real icon. I know I've said that a lot in this video, guys, but it is. It is. You know, I think everybody would have a Mustang at some point in their car collection. You know, obviously, you've got the Bullet model made famous by the film. They've just relaunched that a couple of years ago, the, the limited edition Bullet version. There's so many things you can do with the Mustang. And literally, January this year, they've just brought out their new GT500 version, uh, which is just like 850 brake horsepower. It's just absolutely stunning production car. So, Ford Mustang guys from classic to, to the new shape it's just stunning absolutely stunning Lamborghini Countach is the next car we're going to talk about um, built in 74 to 1990 uh, 1,983 cars built in that in that period uh, a few facelift models a few anniversary special editions as well um, it's the first ever production car to have full vertical scissor doors yeah, I know the Mercedes Gullwing had the open doors, but this is the first production car to have the full scissor vertical doors, and that made it iconic in itself, didn't it? Um, something people don't realise, in the early 80s, the Lamborghini Countach was the most sold poster for the youth of the 80s worldwide. Yeah, it was the most sold. I had one. I had a Lamborghini Countach poster on my bedroom wall, I remember. Um, it was the most have poster for people. It was just such a, a massive move forward from other car productions in its time. It was it was so far ahead, futuristic styling looks, the massive spoiler. It had the largest rear tyres of any production car. The tyres had to be specially made back in the 80s, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Stunning, stunning car. Still got a massive following now by Lamborghini uh, followers and, and aficionados. Um, worth about 300k now. Um, so, you know, depending on the model you get, probably the early 74 cars might be slightly more, but a real iconic car. And again, the children of the new generation need to see the Countach in its glory to see what it is. Uh, it's famous for the fact that you can't reverse it while sitting in the car because the rear window is like a post box. You can't see out of it. So you open the scissor doors and you sit on the seal, you lean out the car and reverse it that way. Um, great, great car. Crazy, crazy styling back in the day, but yeah, great, great car. And while we're talking about Lamborghini, the other car we'll talk about, we have to talk about, is the Lamborghini Miura. Just stunning. Just absolutely stunning, stunning styling from Lamborghini. Uh, built in 66 to 69, only 764 cars ever made. Uh, now, when it was produced in 66, it was $20,000. That was really expensive back in the day. I think I said to you, you know, the estimate on DBS was $13,000. This was $20,000 back in the day, which was just crazy money, absolutely crazy money. But it's now selling for over a million dollars. So, you, you, you know, it's 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 massively increased in value and have a huge popularity. Um, it's 380 brake horsepower, 170 mile an hour top speed from a four litre V12. It's the predecessor, um, it's, it's the car before the contest that made everybody, you know, step up and go, wow, okay, Lamborghini are here to stay, they're making some stunning cars. And it was famous for being the Ferrari beater. That's what Lamborghini, so we've produced a car to beat Ferrari. This was their car. This was the car they were going to use. But even if you look at it now, even a car from the 60s looking at the styling now, it's just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. The way the lights, the, the wing, the way that it's so low slung, you know, it's just absolutely stunning. Um, it's an Italian version of, of a GT40, isn't it? It's just beautiful. So the Lamborghini Miura is definitely a car to look for. Now we're going to talk about a car that still, like the Mustang, still being sold today. Um, but it's been around a long, long time. Lots of variations, lots of, of facelifts and tweaks and future generational models. But a car that's been around a long time. It's got to be the Porsche 911, guys. It's got to be the Porsche 911. Absolutely amazing car. All day, every day, usable sports car, supercar, 
whatever you want to call it. It's just unbelievable. So it started being built in 1963. Obviously, it replaced the 356. Um, but it has been voted as the ultimate sports car of every generation because it's been around for so long. There's hundreds of different variations. Obviously, nowadays, you've got the GT3, the GT3 RSs. Back in the day, you had the SC, the Turbo S, the Targas, the Speedsters, the Roadsters. A few years ago, you had the 911R. And what made it crazy was that the although they it had modern running gear and, and they moved it forward in that respect, the overall shape and style stayed the same. It's even now remained the same. If you saw a new 2020 uh, 911 and saw a 1965 911, the shape's overall the same. You know it's a 911. You know what you're looking at. It's absolutely beautiful. But it was air-cooled until 1998 completely kept it that original the air cooled system they kept it that way they only changed by by um demand for emissions and everything else in 1998 up until that point it was still an air cooled sports car um there's been a massive popularity switch the early 911s and 912s from the 60s are massively up in value now um you could get 912s for sort of like 30 40k you're now talking up sort of 150 200k now for for an early 912 so massively massively popular and even now the modern ones they're just bringing out the new turbo s the geneva show the new turbo s is going to be launched which is just unbelievable such a popular car it's just an amazing amazing car the one millionth yeah i did say that the one millionth 911 came off the production line in 2017 that's just unbelievable unbelievable it's in the stuttgart museum now porsche kept it the one millionth edition 911 came off the production line in 2017 it's just crazy it's such an iconic car and it will continue to be for the next generation and the generation after that i'm sure i think at some point we need to have a 911 on the channel um regardless whether it's an air cooled or water cooled one we need one on the channel they're absolutely stunning now i have mentioned it when we talk about the lamborghini Countach and the doors but we're now going to talk about the 300 sl gullwing just look at it just look at it sitting there. It's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It was built in 1954 and it finished its production line in 1963. Uh, only 400, 1,400 sorry, were ever made. And it was a three litre straight six with 222 brake horsepower. And it sells for well over $1 million now. Um, I, I, out of the 1,400, I don't think there's many still in product, are still available now. Um, I really think it's very, very low limited numbers now available. And that's why it can demand such a high value over $1 million. But it's just stunning. Just absolutely stunning. And the doors make it famous. Yeah, I've got a 300 SL. Oh, you mean the Goldwing car? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know the one you mean. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, there was one on exhibition at the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart a couple of years ago when I was out there. And you could just stand there and look at it for hours and hours from different angles. And it's just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's a it's a Euro Millions dream car, isn't it? You know, you'd have to be that kind of uh, multimillionaire to buy one and have one in your collection. But I'd want to drive it. I wouldn't want it just to sit there. I'd want to drive it. And, and it's just beautiful. Um, without a doubt, iconic, iconic car of its day and for future generations. But while we're talking about Mercedes, I, I can't not talk about the 190 SL, which was classed as the, the more affordable 300 SL, but just as beautiful, just as stunningly beautiful. Building 55 to 63, had a 1.9 in, in line four with 105 brake horsepower and a top speed of 106 mile an hour. Uh, but 25,000 of these were built. So it was built in a, lot, a, a large uh, production facility. Um, it was a more affordable car against the 300 SL and still is now. Um, and it was four thousand dollars when it was new, um, brand new off the production line, and they're now fetching about one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars. But it's absolutely beautiful. The looks, the styling. If you could have one of those, and it was reliable enough to use every day, I don't think you'd want anything else, would you? It's just absolutely stunning. And while we're on the subject of Mercedes, there's been a massive surge of a modern day car that's an icon, the new. Old, new, <laughs> the Mercedes SLS Black Series. It's just absolutely stunning. And this is going to be one of those cars that if you've got hold of one, keep it. Do not get rid of it. Please, please, please keep hold of it. It was only ever 150 ever made. Um, and the Black Series is 622 brake horsepower, which 
uh, is quite a bit up. The original SLS had 583 brake horsepower, so it's up on that. It's the looks, it's the styling, it's the rarity of it. It's just in the last few years, it's gone up massively in value, massively in value. You know, you the the, the non S and the non black series, sorry, are about 150k. The black series now are about 750, 800k, and they are very, very rare, and they are only going to keep going up in value. Um, and there, there's a lot of journalists and car bloggers out there that really would love an SLS black series on their channel, and I totally get it. Uh, there's a couple of white ones with the black wheels going about that just look epic absolutely stunning car so even though we've been talking about 50s and 60s uh, iconic cars the SLS Black Series a modern day car is hugely hugely popular hugely iconic and will be the next generation of supercar uh, that people will want and the value is just going to go up it's just going to go up it, without a shadow of a doubt um, so if you have one keep hold of it if you haven't got one but you can get one in your, in your, in your garage and you have the means get one and just keep hold of it drive it though please don't just leave it in the garage together let's drive it but it's just stunning absolutely beautiful car so the SLS Black Series is a future icon without a shadow of a doubt. And while we're talking about more modern cars, you have to mention the McLaren F1, don't you? You can't not. You have to talk about the McLaren F1. Produced in 1992 to 1998, they only made 106 cars. Um, again, the new, we spoke about the Speedtail in previous videos, the new McLaren Speedtail follows suit it's the three car cockpit layout so the driver in the center of the car just like a formula one car with two passengers sitting behind him at an angle at a directional angle so a three seat configuration the car had a 240 mile an hour top speed 240 mile speed in the early 90s that's just crazy just absolutely crazy um now back in the day it was eight hundred thousand dollars which was a huge amount of money for the early 90s huge now they're selling for north for $15 million. <laughs> it's just crazy, crazy, crazy if you can get your hand on one. Um, 618 brake horsepower. And this was McLaren's first ever attempt at a super hyper car, GT car, just whatever you want to call it. You know, it was just out of this world. And it was a trendsetter without a shadow of a doubt. It made everybody sit up, take notice of what McLaren was doing. And then those production manufacturers had to up their game. And I think that a lot of the supercars and hypercars from that point onwards are here because of thanks to what McLaren did with the F1. They took the car engineering system and took it to another level. And it will always be an icon to any petrol head it will always be one of those cars that if you see one it's a rarity if you hear one game on the track if you get to be a passenger in a in a in a, in a running one it's just unreal it's just mind changing uh, i was fortunate enough to see one i haven't driven one but i have seen one at, at a show a few years ago just absolutely unbelievable um yeah uh, will it forever be an icon and 50 million dollars north of uh, uh, being sold at, at auction yeah i couldn't afford one but absolutely amazing cars now, if we're talking about the McLaren F1, we have to mention the Jaguar XJ220. And this was a car that was completely surrounded by controversy, wasn't it? You know, Jag's first hyper car, if you like, uh, built in 1992 to 1994, only 271 ever made. Uh, three and a half litre V6 twin turbo producing 542 brake horsepower, 212 mile an hour. Um, now, ironically, when it first came out, it was $290,000, but it was index linked. And it was when all the, the all the issues were happening with the car industry and this and the other. So literally people were paying their deposits at 290 grand. And within two weeks, it had gone up in value to $490,000. Uh, and then people were losing their deposits or pulling out lastminute.com. And then it was, it was dropping in value. And then it disappeared off the radar for ages. And then cars were coming out the woodworks. People were finding them in, in warehouses. Uh, people had put them away, hoping that they were going to be massive values. Um, but it still, even now, has a massive following. The looks are completely unique, completely different than anything else that Jag had ever made. Um, and the value is now around about half a million dollars. Um, there's a few for sale at the moment around that kind of mark. You know, there wasn't loads of cars out there, but it's definitely, definitely, definitely an iconic car um, and definitely one that goes alongside the McLaren F1 of that era, that kind of thing, you know. So, listen, guys, we've spoke about a lot of iconic cars. There's loads more we can think about. I haven't spoke about the Honda NSX, which changed the, 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 the landscape for Japanese supercars. There's lots of cars we could talk about. The Subaru Impreza that changed the whole rallying and in street market and had a whole following in the, in the mid-90s. There's lots of cars we can talk about. Um, but, you know, get in touch. 
put in the comments below, DM us on, on Instagram. Let us know what you think. If there's cards you want to talk about, um, there's lots of things we can discuss. As I said at the beginning of the video, guys, so sorry about Geneva. Absolutely gutted. I was really looking forward to going. Um, it was going to be a great thing for the channel. We were invited out. That would have been lovely. But these things happen. These things happen. There's nothing you can do. So, guys, thanks for watching. It's been a long video today. We've got some driving, uh, actual car driving videos next week. It'll be a bit exciting for you guys. Don't be getting too bored watching me talking. Guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It's really important. We're a new channel. We need your help. We need your support. We want to get it out there. We've got a lot of exciting things coming forward this year. A lot of uh, manufacturers have invited us out. There's going to be some new cars being run on the channel as well. A lot of cars of videos to be seen. So please subscribe. Please push the notification button. Tell your friends. Let's get the channel up and running. Let's get it moving. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Please, guys, please be safe out there. And um, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good time. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.